Hey, Steve Jolly with the Home Buying Skills Channel. Today's show, we're going to talk about housing forecasts and will it get ugly in 2023? Let's get to business. Now, first, we want to talk about the housing supply or the inventory of homes for sale. Before the market crashed during the Great Recession in 2008, we saw about 13 months of inventory. What that really means is it would take 13 months of sales with no new homes coming on the market to deplete the current inventory level. That was in 2008. Today, it's much different. We only have three months of inventory. That means if no new home came on the market today, three months from now, there would be no homes for sale. That's a huge difference in the market conditions between 2008 and 2022. Now, most homeowners today have loans that are less than 5%. And so those guys are going to be unlikely to want to buy a new home and trade out that 3% loan for a 6 or 7% loan like we have today. So that's a huge disincentive for people that currently own a home. And so that's one of the things that's probably going to affect the supply in 2023 is because fewer people will be putting their home on the market because they don't want to buy another one and pay that high interest rate. Now, most builders are scared of the current market conditions. They have 2008 and the Great Recession as a recent memory, and they got caught holding the bag with homes and lots that they couldn't sell. They don't want that to happen again. So most builders, in fact, 87% of them that were recently surveyed said they're going to build 5 to 10% fewer homes in 2023 than they did this year. That, again, is going to reduce the supply of homes on the market. Now, the good news for home sellers is as builders start to wind down, especially in those areas where there's a lot of new home inventory, that's going to make it easier for sellers or homeowners to be able to put their home on the market and sell. I know in some areas right now, it's a little tough because there's an abundant amount of new construction properties in that area. And people just prefer new construction, especially when it's about the same price as existing homes on the market. So that's the good news for home sellers. In Nashville, where I live, it appears that the inventory growth we saw earlier in the year has already started to flatten. Now, part of that is due to seasonal conditions. We just sell fewer homes in the winter time, and so fewer homes are going on the market in the winter. A part of that is seasonal, part of that is driven by market conditions. So that's a good thing. Now to wrap up inventory for 2023, we expect fewer homes on the market, which is a good thing because we also expect the demand to be less than it was this year. So the demand and the supply should match for a balanced market. Now let's talk about interest rates and inflation. Now, most economists expect there are three potential scenarios for 2023 as it revolves around inflation and interest rates. And here's the first scenario. The first scenario is that the Federal Reserve doesn't get inflation under control and they have to continue raising the federal fund rate in order to bring inflation back under control. On the outside, these experts expect that it could take as much as a 200 basis point gain from where we are right now to reel in inflation at the worst. And if that happens, they expect rates to go up as high as 8.5% sometime in 2023. So look for rates to increase next year slightly if we have scenario number one, which that's the worst case scenario. And if we have scenario number one, this would have a huge effect on the market because rates going that high would further slow down sales in an already slowing down market. We could also see prices drop. Now, I'm not expecting that to happen, but if you wait to the end, you'll hear my expectation. Here's scenario number two. The Federal Reserve slowly gets inflation under control and the interest rate stabilizes around 7%. If that's what happens, what we expect in 2023 will look a lot like 2022. So that's scenario number two. So if that happens, I don't expect big changes from what we see today. Here's scenario number three. The Fed takes aggressive action, which results in a rapidly declining market economy, which causes us to go into a recession and which causes interest rates to fall. And to me, this is the most likely scenario because this is typically what happens when the Fed raises the federal funds rate. And they've done that more aggressively today than they have in the recent past. So I expect us to be into a recession for the early part of 2023 and for us to roll out of it and start growing again beginning in 2024. And in other words, a small recession at the beginning of 2023 will help bring rates down, make homes more affordable, stimulate the economy, we'll be off to a great start for 2024. Now let's talk about home sales because that's a huge part of the market and what we're going to be expecting in 2023. And to begin with, you need to know what happened first this year. 
Now, Fannie Mae expects total existing home sales in 2022 to be 5.67 million homes sold. Now, that's a lot, but it's down from 6 million existing homes sold in 2021. And we expect further declines in 2023 and 2024. So 2023 is going to look like about 4.4 million homes sold, and 2024 is going to jump back up to 4.6 million homes sold. Now, this is a forecast from Fannie Mae. A lot of that depends really what happens on the interest rates and inflation. Now, if we hit scenario number three, I think you'll see numbers better than this, especially in 2024. Now, Fannie Mae expects the trough for the recession will come in quarter two, will start to grow again, and we'll, by the end of the year, we'll be in growth mode. So they expect us to have a slowdown at the beginning of the year and be back to growing by the end of 2023. Now let's talk about prices and what Zillow's price forecast is for 2023. Now they expect by January 2023, prices will have dropped a little bit and we'll be about 0.6% down from where we were in the same month in 2022. Now that's not a huge decrease, that's less than 1%, but they expect by the end of the year, we'll be back in growth mode again just like Fannie Mae, and that the growth in prices will be 0.8% above where it was in 2021 by the end of the year. So we might see a slight slowdown in prices, especially if the interest rates jumps way up at the beginning of the year, like, like a lot of people expect. But then as it goes down, we will see the market come back and we'll see that growth kick back again. Now, much of this depends upon the supply and demand in your local area. It's not always the same. These are just what's happening across the nation, the general market pressures and how it's feeling. But everything in real estate is local. So if you have a lot of inventory in your area, it's gonna make selling your home a little harder. It's gonna make buying your home a little easier. That's just how it works. So just keep in mind, this is a national forecast, but what happens in your area is specific to your area and you should seek a local expert to give you guidance on what you should do. Thank you for watching this show on the housing market. If you liked the video, click the like button to let us know you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll make sure to answer them. And be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you never miss another episode. Take care and have a good day.